Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy. The mystery you see behind me referred to as orcs, odd radio circles, strange beautiful circles and rings that seem to be only visible in radio light, originally detected by accident in 2019 and whose origin is still not entirely clear. But in the last six years or so, piece by piece, researchers started to demystify all of these objects, especially based on some of the recent observations in the last few years. And so in this video we're going to discuss one of the most recent discoveries that actually once again doesn't really make a lot of sense, the discovery that you see right here, but that now presents us with additional explanations and additional propositions. Well the first let's I guess start with exactly what these are and what these seem to look like in the night skies. And well imagine looking up in the night skies but instead of using your eyes or instead of using an optical telescope you're looking at this with a powerful radio telescope, for example the Australian ASCAP. And so this is kind of like listening to the universe in radio light instead of optical light. And while well, back in 2019 astronomers using ASCAP completely by accident discovered these very faint and also almost perfectly circular shapes that seem to be enormous in size, possibly several times larger than a typical galaxy. As a matter of fact at least one of them was claimed to be approximately 2 million light years across. And so because they were so strange and because they were circular and also because they were only visible in radio light, researchers started to refer to them as odd radio circles. And what made them odd was the fact that they were only visible in radio waves. No optical light, no infrared, no x-rays, nothing else. And that's actually very unexpected because normally most astronomical objects produce at least a few emissions in additional frequencies. And so here there was something completely new and something that was somewhat challenging to explain. But obviously scientists had many ideas for what these could be. One proposition was that maybe they were ancient supernova, representing these really giant cosmic rings relatively close to us, or maybe even planetary nebula. But as more orcs were discovered, it became clear that most of them were very distant and extremely large. As a matter of fact, they often seemed to have some kind of a galaxy right in the center. And this suggests that whatever was causing them was probably happening around these faraway galaxies and possibly the result of some kind of a ridiculously massive explosion. With one of the biggest clues coming from the radio emissions themselves. Here this was referred to as synchrotron radiation. This happens when incredibly fast moving electrons spiral around magnetic field lines, but in this case on cosmic scales. And so this non-thermal emission containing very specific steep negative spectra, or essentially spectra where radio signals get weaker at higher frequencies, pointed to a process involving very energetic particles and a lot of magnetic fields, so in essence possibly some kind of a shock wave or some kind of an outflow from the central galaxy. And one of the first significant breakthroughs came from the studies of an object known as ORC-4. And here astronomers looked at this using optical telescopes, discovering something unexpected, a lot of fluorescent light from oxygen atoms in the central galaxy. This is often referred to as the O2 light. And this was a strong indicator of intense star formation, also known as starburst activity, that eventually led to a compelling hypothesis. Roughly around a billion years ago, the galaxy in the center of this circle seemed to have experienced an enormous but brief star forming period where millions and millions of massive stars formed in a relatively short period of time, exploding as huge amounts of supernova in quick succession. And so this cascade of explosions that happened very briefly possibly created enormous galactic wind in the center of this galaxy, blasting all of this gas from inside the galaxy and essentially forming an enormous shock wave. And when all of this fast moving galactic wind slammed into the thinner gas surrounding the galaxy, it possibly created a lot of these massive shock waves. And so with time the shock wave grew to enormous sizes over a period of a billion years and is now visible as several radio rings that appear this way. And so basically here this was the result of electrons caught in the shock of this wave that spiraled around the magnetic fields producing synchrotron radiation. And here this model even predicted what's known as the reverse shock. This is where some of the gas stalls and starts to fall back towards the galaxy and that would actually produce these unusual optical light emissions involving oxygen. But for this scenario to occur we need something very specific. Here we would require a huge outflow of material and a relatively low density environment around the galaxy because otherwise the sphere would not grow so large. 
which actually would make this particular region of space unusually low in density. And that's actually one of the biggest criticisms of this explanation so far, because normally we expect a lot more gas around a typical galaxy. And so for at least some of the orcs, there was still a bit of a mystery, and it was still not very easy to explain. And so since not all of these orc objects could be explained with this starburst hypothesis, researchers kept looking for more objects and tried to explain this in other ways. And this brings us to this new discovery from September of 2025. The study by Sam Tazio and the team you see here focused on a recently discovered orc known as G0356-4216. And this orc is special because it seems to show a double ring structure. A structure that you can kind of see right here. This was discovered by the South Africa's Meerkat radio telescope, but also observed by ASCAP. And so here's what we know about this object so far. First, it's located pretty far away, the redshift of 0.49, or around 6.3 billion light years away from us. And so based on the size of the object in a nice case, we know that it seems to be 2.18 million light years across. And it's also associated with some kind of a host galaxy you see in the center. This seems to be a massive elliptical galaxy. On top of this, we also see the emissions, and we can tell a little bit more about them by observing things like polarization and by observing certain wavelengths. For example, here we have steep radio spectra. Both of these rings show very steep spectra, strongly supporting the idea of some kind of a synchrotron radiation or fast-moving electrons, but very likely coming from the older population of energetic electrons that lost the energy over time because they've been traveling for millions and millions of years. It also contains relatively high polarization. Here the polarization is 20-30%, referring to the alignment of the electric and the magnetic field in the radio waves, and basically telling us that this is coming from ordered magnetic fields from inside these rings. And this is of course a key piece of evidence. This is what we expect from structures formed by various shock waves and various outflows. And so based on the magnetic field strength that's approximately 1.82 microgauss, we can even estimate the overall strength of the emissions. Likewise, this seems to be located in the overdense environment, or basically the region around this orc shows an overdensity of galaxies at similar distances, suggesting that this object is not isolated, but might be interacting with other galaxies, maybe even hinting at past galactic mergers. And so based on these observations, there are currently two main propositions or two main explanations. First, this could be some kind of a large-scale shock driven by powerful starburst once again. In other words, very similar to Orc 4, a massive starburst in the host galaxy generated very powerful bipolar jets that then created these expanding shockwaves, but in this case forming the double ring structure. And based on the magnetic field observations and the overall morphology, this actually might make sense. But the second explanation is a little bit different. This could be a relic emission from some kind of an active black hole in the center that once again involved very powerful jets. And so a black hole in the center of this galaxy that was actively consuming matter for millions of years, might produce very powerful jets that would fire these very powerful particles that would then create these really large radio lobes. And they can, in theory, resemble expanding bubbles. And so when the black hole activity faded, these lobes remained behind, appearing as these glowing radio circles. And in this case, because of the high degree of symmetry and the double ring structure, as well as the lack of smaller internal details, this could technically be two different lobes from two jets in the opposite direction. And so just to help you visualize this, so imagine some kind of a very powerful black hole emitting these really powerful jets that then create these very large rings spreading for over 2 billion light years across. And in this case, based on the observations in the infrared, we know that the galaxy in the center seems to have had powerful activity in the past. And so there's definitely a signs of black hole activity from millions or even billions of years ago. Which means that right now this explanation makes the most sense. And that means that other orcs could also have been produced in a very similar way, suggesting that Starburst is obviously not the only source for these very bizarre formations. But the biggest mystery when it comes to these objects is actually their rarity. As of September of 2025, only 10 so far have been confirmed, implying that whatever this is and whatever is causing this seems to be some kind of a very unique, very special, and difficult to understand circumstance. I mean, we know quite a lot of galaxies out there contain starburst activity, and quite a lot of galaxies contain active black holes, but pretty much most of them don't seem to produce anything like this. Only 10 objects have been so far confirmed, and exactly why these objects and not the other ones we've seen before is of course the biggest unanswered question. And so even though in the last six years there's been a lot of progress in trying to explain this, this mystery is far from being solved. 
And that means that we need additional observations with even more powerful telescopes, for example the upcoming Square Kilometer Array, that will hopefully discover even more of these objects, helping us identify certain features that seem to unite all of them, and helping us explain why other galaxies and other active regions don't seem to contain anything similar. And by doing this, we're not just going to solve an orc mystery, we're also going to gain incredible insights into how galaxies evolve, how supermassive black holes affect their surroundings, and understand powerful processes that shape the universe we live in. And so for radio astronomy, this is super exciting times, and we can only expect a lot of additional mysteries and a lot of additional discoveries in years to come. But until future discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos and previous explanations about orcs in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional secret videos. Or you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful present t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.